here i am going to use random formula rand that generates a random number between 0 and 1 and i'm going to drag it to let's say cell row 101 so that i'm getting generating 100 random numbers numbers now i'll use the int formula so that i can get numbers between 0 to uh, in 0 to 99 rather than in decimals Now I have generated random numbers. Let us see what we are getting. We are getting 21, 20, 43 like that. Let us see how many times each number is coming. How we can do it? We can do it by generating a pivot table. So we are taking the interval data, which is like interval data is essentially because we converted the random number to 0 to 100 kind of thing. And then we are take, going to take the count, we will change the sum to count. So essentially we are going to see that how many times we got 1, how many times we got 2, how many times we got 3 and let us now plot it. Now it has 0 to 100, so that is why you are seeing, but you can see that more a, a number of values we are getting here. This was just to show you that we have generated a set of random numbers and how it looks. Now we will go and we will generate the averages and we are generating average of 30 numbers at a time. So. I will select till 31 so that it is an average of 30 numbers. I will go at the bottom and clean some, clean some last values because the last values will probably not be, we have the values till 101 only so we are going to clean some values. Now let us again because these are decimals so we will convert it into interval by taking int formula. Now let us see how many times we are getting interval. So if you see here we will again make a pivot table to understand it. Let us make it here. So, essentially again I am finding that if I take the average what I am getting. Now let me see the chart. Oh, this chart is not going to help. Let me just take another chart. Now, what do you see? All of a sudden, we are not getting anything like 0 or not getting anything like 99. What we are getting is more centralized values and you can see that the central tendencies are more than extreme values. Now, we have done here with the live example of just 100 data points. If at all we repeat the same exercise with 50,000 50, data points, we are going to get more closure values than for the normal distribution. Here I have already populated this data with 50,000 data points and if you see the chart here, you see the values 
the values are you know more or less uniform you can see it's more, more or less uniform distribution the moment we have taken 30 or more random numbers and taken their averages what we are getting is more or less normal distribution once again understand one thing that what are these values these are the values and what are the the what does the curve show the curve shows the frequency so essentially this is the question that i explained in the beginning that people get confused now i am going to revisit to the ppt once again so whatever is the distribution of population the distribution was following the population was following not uniform distribution the moment we started taking 30 or more random numbers and we started taking average the distribution of averages were normal distribution even if the population follows a triangular distribution or this kind of distribution the moment you start taking 30 or more random numbers and you start taking averages the averages will follow a normal distribution also if averages are following normal distribution the sum will follow normal distribution because average into number of uh, objects that gives you sum this is the this is central limit theorem this is the main reason why we apply normality assumptions in many cases when we are doing the hypothesis testing thanks for your time i'm going to explain you next the p value and the hypothesis testing in other videos thank you